It's Crazy Daisy Day. I'm Andy Jones, content editor of Plaid's online education program, Let's Paint. And today, we are painting daisies. I'm gonna take you step by step through the process to create this really pretty daisy painting. Won't you join me? For our crazy daisies, I'm gonna show you how to create the background effect. I painted my wooden surface with a mixture of titanium white plus ultramarine blue plus aqua, applied a coat of that, let it dry, sanded it, and applied a second coat, and now that's dry. So I'm going to mix the colors we need to add to our background, and they are ultramarine blue. I'm going to use aqua. And I'm also going to use some titanium white and some pure orange. And our daisy painting is a nice complementary color study. So our complementary colors are orange and blue and they're going to be the dominant colors in our painting. So I'm going to take some of the ultramarine blue, pull that away from my puddle of paint, wipe my palette knife off, and I'm going to pick up a good chunk of aqua and add that to my blue. I want to create a nice dark bluish green color. And you can make this more aqua or more um, ultramarine blue. It's up to you. You're going to be in control of this. I just want to look at this color and see what it looks like uh, against my background color. So I'll just come over here and I'll check that. And I think that's going to be just fine. So I'm going to actually uh, spread this out a little bit like I'm icing a cake here on my palette. All right, then I'm going to clean my palette knife, wiping it thoroughly on a paper towel, and I'm going to pull some titanium white away from the puddle of paint, wipe my palette knife off to clean it, and I'm going to add a little chunk of pure orange because I want to make an orange sherbet color. I think that's not quite orange enough. So I'm going to clean my palette knife off again and pick up another little chunk of orange. And always add more, but you can't take it away. So when you're mixing your paint, always mash the paint to mix it. You're never going to mix your paint if you try to stir it, but mash your paint. Make sure it's all thoroughly mixed. I think I still want this to be just a little bit darker. So again, wipe off my palette knife, pick up a little chunk of orange, and then mix that right in. Okay. Now then, again, I'm going to spread this out like icing a cake here on my palette. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to use a fantastic tool to create our interesting background. I'm going to be using a Folk Art Home Decor layering block, which you can find in the Home Decor section of your local craft shop. And what we're going to do is we're going to load the flat surface of our layering block, and then we're gently going to drag it across our surface and create an abstract background. So I'm going to just load the layering block and then start on the surface and with very light to no pressure, just begin to pull the block along and you can see that it's making its own kind of abstract design on the surface. I can pick up more paint and I can come back from the opposite direction. I can add as much color to the surface as I want to. 
move over and do the next little bit. And I guarantee you that no matter how you try, you will never get the same results twice in a row. And you just go with whatever you get. And you learn to love it and say, that's exactly what I wanted this to look like. So you would continue all the way across your background with this dark blue color and let that dry. And then I'm going to wipe my layering block off on my paper towel. Then I'm going to clean it with just a damp paper towel. So I want to get the blue off to show you how cool the orange color looks. But I got to get rid of this blue first. We'll set that aside. Pick up a clean paper towel and wipe the color off of the layering block. Then we'll pick up some of the orange. And I'm not going to put that directly over the wet blue. I'm just going to demonstrate for you right over here. You would, of course, have covered your uh, surface with the dark blue, let that dry, and then come back with some of this sherbet color. And you can see that this orange against the blue looks really, really interesting. And that's because they are complementary colors. And you want to put less of the orange on than you have of the blue. The blue is going to be the dominant color of our background. So once you've covered your background with the blue and come back and added some orange accents, you'll want to let your back ground completely dry and transfer your design and then we'll come back and show you how to paint your crazy daisies. All right, we have completed our background, transferred our design and you're thinking, whoa, he's gone way ahead of me. Well, that's true. I have gone way ahead of you because this painting has a lot of repetitious elements in it. And if I were to paint all of this for you, you would tune out so quick and not pay any attention to what I had to say. So I've done a lot of painting ahead of time so that I can take you through the important elements of how to paint a daisy petal and then you can move on and paint yours at your own pace. And I want to let you know that a painting that has this many flower petals is not going to be a painting that you're going to be able to sit down and do in an hour or two. A painting like this is going to take you several sessions so have that in your mind ahead of time. So I am going to show you how to paint all of the daisy petals so you'll understand the whole technique of how to do that. And we're going to start off by undercoating our petals. And I'm going to give you one of the best secrets ever. If you have to undercoat with red or yellow, they're notoriously uh, transparent colors, so it, on a background like this where we've got dark and light contrasting colors or even just a simple dark color, it could take three, four, five coats sometimes to get a really nice coverage of paint. And I know none of you want to spend your life undercoating. So your secret weapon when undercoating with red or yellow is going to be folk art yellow ochre. That is the secret. Yellow ochre is a very opaque color and it's going to help your undercoating go much more quickly. So I'm going to come over here onto my darker orange or red orange daisy and I'm going to show you how to undercoat the petals which would be your first step on every petal on this flower. So I'm loading my brush with yellow ochre. I'm going to move to another area on the palette so I have a little mixing zone. And I'm going to pick up Napthol Crimson Again, this is the original formula of Folk Art Acrylic. And I'm just going to brush mix these colors together. And you don't really need to be concerned that this color's not terribly attractive. That's not what we're working for. We're working to get a color that's gonna be much more opaque than Napthol Crimson would be by itself. So then I'm going to come on to my flower and I'm simply going to undercoat this petal and this color is still not completely opaque, but it certainly is much more opaque than had I just been using Napthol Crimson by itself. But you just want to use your basic brush strokes 
to fill in the petals of your daisy. And just stroke that color on and fill in your daisy petal. Again, we're just brush mixing yellow ochre and naphthol crimson to base coat our daisy petal to give us a nice, more opaque undercoat color. You would need to let this color dry and probably put on a second coat if you really want a good opaque coverage. Then once you have applied probably two coats of this, then I would come back just with my naphthol crimson and apply a final top coat. You'll see you get a much better coverage even over this um, first layer, even though it's not completely covered. But then when you paint with your naphthol crimson, you'll have a nice bright red color. And again, do that on all of the daisy petals on the more red orange flower. Now for the lighter orange flower, again, our secret weapon is going to be yellow ochre, but we're going to load our brush with yellow ochre. And this time with pure orange, we're going to add and brush mix those colors together. Your yellow ochre is going to give you the, um, give you more opacity than you would get just with the pure orange by itself. And I've got a couple of petals here on this flower that need to be undercoated. So again, use your basic brush strokes and then just fill in. I'll be very honest with you, this is going to be the least exciting part of this painting, but you need to get a nice undercoat on your flower petals before you move on to the next step. I'll turn this so I can get a nice crisp edge on the other side of the petal. Try to use the largest brush that you feel comfortable with painting your petals. I wouldn't try to paint these petals with a four or six flat brush. That's just too small. And again, you'll probably need to apply at least two coats of this orange and ochre undercoat before you come back and apply your pure orange on top of that which will be the base color for your orange daisy petals. All right, so now we understand how we're going to undercoat our flower petals. So if you're working along, this would be a great time to pause your video and paint all of your flower petals. I'll estimate that that'll take you a couple of hours to do that. And then when we come back, I'm gonna show you how we start to add depth and dimension to our flowers when we apply our shading. Okay, if you've come back, I know you've worked really hard to get all of your flower petals undercoated. Good job. Now we're going to begin to apply the dark shading on our uh, flower petals. And I'm going to work on my orange daisy first. It doesn't matter which daisy you work on, but I'm gonna start over here on my orange daisy. And I'm going to be using a flat brush. So I'm going to dampen the flat brush in water, blot it on a paper towel, and I'm going to side load my brush by stroking into some Folk Art True Burgundy. And I'm gonna come over here and make a loading zone on my palette. Now, you can already tell I've got way too much water, so I'm gonna blot my brush on my paper towel again, and then come back to my loading zone and carefully work the True Burgundy across the brush to get a nice gradation of color. And I'm also going to pick up some Burnt Sienna because I want to differentiate between my daisies, so I'm gonna alter the shading color on the different flowers. Blending the color across our brush so that we have a nice gradation of color from strong color to no color. Now, I'm going to 
turned my daisy so that it's comfortable for me to work on it. And I'm going to apply the shading where one daisy petal goes behind another. So this petal back here, we're going to start, we're going to pat this shading color on where one petal goes behind another, just like that, nice and dark. Make sure my brush is loaded with paint and we're gonna do this petal that's sneaking way back in here. So all the way down, I'm gonna turn my daisy And on this side of the petal, just start right out there and slide right back in and then just pat that color across the petal to soften that shading up into the, toward the tip of the petal there. I'm going to shade where this petal goes behind that one, pat the color on. Shade where the petal dips back behind the daisy center and walk that color up. And a shade here at the base of this daisy petal, patting the color on, walk, walk, walk up. Got one more petal to shade over here. I'm gonna shade at the base of the petal, pat the color on and walk, walk, walk that color up into the petal. All right. That's how you apply the shading on the orange daisy and you would do that on all the petals. And then I'm gonna come over here and I've got one little petal that's undercoated over here so that I can show you how to shade the more red daisy. So make sure my brush is wet. My color that I just rinsed out of the brush is still strong on this side of the brush. So I'll go into the true burgundy, move over here to my loading zone Blot the excess water on my paper towel. Blend in my loading zone. And to make this true burgundy even darker, I'm going to come over and pick up some sap green, folk art acrylic, and work that green in with the true burgundy. And this is really going to make a nice dark shading color. You do not get the same effect if you were to take your palette knife and mix the true burgundy and sap green together. You need to make sure that you mix it on your brush. And then we will do just like we did over here on this daisy. We're going to shade where one petal goes behind another, patting that rich dark color on. Turn this daisy around. Let me get this up here so you can see it a little better. Put that dark color on there and then pat and walk that color out into the petal. So we get a nice, strong, dark color. All right, that's how we apply the shading using our side loading technique. And you would continue on around the daisy shading all of your petals. And that's going to take you a little while, so we're going to pause the video here for you to catch up or to work on at your own pace. And then when we come back, I'm going to show you how we establish the highlights on our daisy petals. Glad you're still with me and you've done a great job so far undercoating your daisies using our secret weapon of the yellow ochre. Then you've applied lots of nice dark shading colors so that we can have bright, beautiful highlights. And to develop our highlights, we're going to begin with our undercoat color. So I'm going to start over here on my lighter orange daisy. I'm going to pick up some pure orange on my brush, which does not have any water in it. You can't do a dry brush technique with a wet brush. Load my brush, take off the excess paint. I want a sparse amount of paint on my brush. And we're going to start at the tips of the petals. And we're going to scrub this color back with our pure orange color, which is our base coat color, the initial intent is simply to soften into our shading color. So as we work this color on, we want to skim back into our shading. Not too much paint on our brush. We start out at the end of the petal and just feather and soften this color down into the shading. Again, Start out at the tip of the petal, 
sparse amount of paint on our brush and we're just going to begin to feather this color down into our shading. Don't expect that this is going to be dramatic right off the bat. It's going to take a few layers of shading before we really start to see a lot of drama developing on our daisy. So again, just lightly scrubbing this color on, softening it down into our shadow. Next, I'm going to take the pure orange and I'm going to add some medium yellow folk art acrylic to that and I'm going to brush mix these colors together. I want to create a lighter orange color I'm going to take the excess color off on my palette and I'm going to start back on my daisy. Petals out at the end where I want the color to be the brightest and again soften and feather this color down onto the petal. Start out here, add a little bit out there. You can see that that has built up what seems to be a much brighter highlight because there was a lot more dark down there. So again, small amount of medium yellow, taking the excess paint off on our paper towel, and then we're going to start back at the outside edge of our petals and just feather this color on. And I think as you're working on your flower, it's probably going to be best if you Pick a petal and then work either clockwise or counterclockwise. Work all the way around the flower, repeating each stage on each petal as you go. So again, we're just feathering this lighter orange color onto our petal. Starting at the tip of the petal and working opposite our shadow one value lighter, sparse amount of paint on our brush, take the excess off on our paper towel, and then begin at the outside edge and just simply feather this lighter highlight onto your daisy petal. If you have too much paint on your brush, you'll know it right away because you'll make a big light blob and you'll be like, oh no, that's not what I wanted. Generally, don't have to worry about that. Just pay attention to what you're doing and have less paint on your brush the next time. So adding more medium yellow to my mixing area. Sparse amount of paint. Take the excess off on my paper towel. And again, start at the tip of the flower petal and just feather that color down toward the center As you develop lighter highlights, they take up less room and you can apply them faster. Work neatly and carefully. Don't be in a rush. As I mentioned earlier, it's going to take you a while to complete this painting. There's nothing difficult about it. It's just going to take you a while to do it because there's so many little daisy petals. Now, some people paint their daisies uh, just using brush strokes and that's perfectly fine, but I wanted to show you a different way to do it, um, developing lots of rich shading and vibrant highlights. And again, sparse amount of paint on your brush, just let that color feather off. Take the excess off on your paper towel, start at the end of your daisy petal, and just walk that color back toward the center. I'm going to now pick up some lemon yellow and work that in at the edge of our mixing zone. So I want to make sure that this is getting brighter. Sparse amount of paint on my brush. I'm going to come over, take the excess off on my paper towel and then begin the outside edge of the petal. Just softly feather that on. 
I think you can see with the addition of the lemon yellow that the highlights are starting to become much bolder and brighter. Again, start at the outside edge of those petals and feather that color back, always making sure that each layer of highlights is a little bit lighter and occupies a little bit smaller area. Sparse amount of paint on your brush. Take the excess off on your paper towel before you come to your flower petal and just softly feather that color on. Come back and get the big petal. Now, I'm going to begin to introduce a small amount of titanium white folk art acrylic into my highlight paint. And as soon as you start to add white, you're going to notice a big dramatic change in our highlights sparse amount of paint on the brush, make sure that I've removed the excess onto my paper towel, and you will see just how much brighter and more dramatic the highlights are when you have a little bit of white in your mixture. Again, work neatly and carefully. Sparse amount of paint on the brush, excess paint off on your paper towel, Start at the edge of the flower petal and just feather that highlight on. As you work on this painting, you'll catch on to this and you'll be like, oh, I understand exactly what he's saying. You'll get it and it'll be a lot of fun to finish out the painting. Just adding more white to my brush, taking the excess off on my paper towel, then coming back and making sure that my highlight is a lighter value Seems like that was too much the same color, so I'm going to add some additional white. Take the excess off on my paper towel. Come back and begin to feather that color onto my daisy petals. Again, just still picking up small amounts of white, mixing it in, taking the excess off on my paper towel, and highlighting the end of the daisy petals and feathering that color back on the petal toward the center. Now, once you've brought your daisy petals up to this level of highlighting, it's probably going to be good to take your brush and clean it out on your paper towel by folding the paper towel over, applying pressure, and just pinching the brush, and that will help take the excess paint off the outside of the brush and groom the brush back to a nice flat brush shape. I want you to see here on my paper towel that I have a nice value scale going from my original pure orange where I begin to add yellow and then to add more and more white. So you can see how I built up a value scale and that's how I built up the values on my highlights. So having taken out most of the color on my brush, I'm going to come back and pick up some titanium white, and there will still be some residual yellows and oranges in my brush, but I'll be able to make a much brighter highlight having cleaned out the brush on my paper towel. So remove the excess paint, and then we're going to come back and start to add some much brighter highlights again. You can see how much brighter that edge is than this edge. Just softly feather that on. Make sure you have a very sparse amount of paint on your brush. And start at the outside edge of the daisy petal. And just feather that color back toward the center. There's nothing difficult about this. It just takes some time. I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm going to pick up some more titanium white for just some brighter highlights on this flower. And just soften that out. Again, very sparse amount of paint on your brush. And add some really bright highlights. Doesn't have to be all over every petal, but you do want to bring some of these up to be very, very light. 
so that you have a definite contrast between highlight and shadow. And that's how we would paint all of the flower petals on our light orange daisy. Now, for our darker, more red-orange flower, I'm going to need to clean the white paint out of my brush so that I don't make a flower that is going to be pink. So I'm going to wipe my brush out thoroughly, pick up Naphthol Crimson. I'm going to just come over here on the palette and I'm going to work that red all the way through the bristles of the brush. I want to do anything except put my brush in water. Because again, I'm doing a dry brush technique, so I don't want any water in my brush. So I'm going to wipe that red paint out of my brush. And just for safety's sake, I'm going to do it one more time because I really don't want to paint a pink daisy. I want this other daisy to be a red-orange color. So wiping that paint out of my brush. I think we're safe. And I'm going to start with a little Naphthol Crimson. That's the same color that we ended up our undercoat with. Sparse amount of paint on my brush. And what we're going to do is we're going to begin to soften our um, dark burgundy shading color. So we're going to start out at the end of our flower petal and we're just going to feather this back into our shading. And this is going to sound so much like what we did on our other flower petal. We're going to start at the outside edge, just softly feather this back into our dark shading. Our first layer of highlight is really just cleaning up our dark shading. So take the excess paint off of our brush. Start and just soften that color back into the dark shading or toward the center of the flower. All right, now I'm going to take some of the Naphthol Crimson and I'm going to add some pure orange to my mixing area because I want to brush mix a nice red orange color. I want this to be lighter than the Naphthol Crimson but darker than pure orange somewhere in between there. Mix the color up, take the excess color off my brush because I just want, what? A sparse amount of paint on the brush, that's right. And we're going to start at the tip of the flower petal and just begin to feather this back toward the center. And we're going to repeat this on all of the petals on our red-orange daisy. Now, keep in mind that you can paint daisies any color you want to using this exact same technique. Base coat it the color you want it, shade with a darker version of that color, and then begin to develop the highlights by building a value scale of your base coat color through your highlight color, which will probably end up being somewhere around light yellow or white. All right, more orange, mixing that color, again taking the excess paint off on my paper towel, starting at the end or the tip of the petal, lightly feather this color on and then soften it in toward the shaded area of the petal. Again, start at the tip, feather the shading on, I like to paint this way because you get to watch your flower come to life with each additional layer of highlighting. So now I should be at just pure orange, wiping the paint off my brush, picking up some orange, making sure I don't have too much on my brush. And we'll again start at the tip of the petal and we'll just softly feather this down toward the shading. And again, I would pick a spot and I would work around your daisy, applying the same step to every petal as I go. And I love that there's a little texture in the background, which just the paint just collects on those ridges and it makes it so visually interesting. 
Don't try to fight the texture in your background. Let it work for you. Again, starting at the tip of the petal and then just feathering that color down into the petal toward the center. I wipe my brush off really well. I'm going to pick up some pure orange. Sparse amount of paint on my brush. Start out at the tip. Just feather that color on. Work it down toward the center of the flower. Now I'm going to add some medium yellow to my orange. And we're going to take the excess paint off of the brush. Make sure I have just a sparse amount of paint. Then start at the tip of the petal. I'm really going to make sure that I've got nice, good contrast from the light of this petal next to the shading on that petal. And just feather this color back. Doing the same thing on this petal, starting out at the tip and working that down toward the center of the flower. Here, I want to make sure I've got good contrast between the highlight on that petal and the shading on the petal behind it. Okay, I'm going to introduce a little bit of lemon yellow to my highlight mixing zone here on the palette. Now this lemon yellow has some white in it, so it's going to make a dramatic difference when I apply this highlight to my flower. I want to make sure that I've taken the excess paint off of my brush so that when I start, you can see just how much brighter that color is. Again, apply the highlight, feather that color down toward the flower center. And it's so interesting to see just how quickly you can develop these light orange highlights on this very reddish flower, which is exactly what we want to do. And you would continue to develop those highlights all the way around your flower as you paint. So it's a lot of highlighting that we've done and it's going to take you a little while to do it, but you can. So I'm going to give you plenty of time to work on the highlights on your flowers before we come back and paint the center of our daisies. Okay, if you've stuck with me this long, you've got a beautiful painting in front of you and you've completed all of your red orange daisy and your light orange daisy. And now we have to give the flowers a center. So before I start painting, I'm going to take some titanium white and I'm going to mix that with just a little bit of ultramarine blue. Always wipe your palette knife off before you go into another color of paint. So I'm going to mix a little ultramarine blue into my titanium white. And I'm going to add a small amount of burnt umber to this to tone the color down. Making a nice of ice blue color. Mix that together well, push it off to the side, and I'm going to base coat the center of my flower with burnt umber. I'm just going to bring this a little closer, and we're just going to fill in the entire center with the burnt umber, painting carefully around these flower petals that come up over the front edge of the center. And then we're just going to fill in the remainder of the center. The burnt umber is going to give you nice coverage. Okay, now I'm going to lightly wipe off my brush and I'm going to Pick up pure black on one half of the brush and just make a little loading zone on my palette. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some dark shading along the bottom of my flower petal. Just kind of patting that color on. Obviously reshaping that petal there. Just 
soften that into the center. Just patting that dark color on. Extending that around a little bit. If I need to, I can pick up some burnt umber on the other half of the brush, go back into my loading zone, and just pat that on to soften it. In fact, I actually will double load the brush now with burnt umber and black. And we're going to create the depression in the center of our flower, dabbing that depression in there, and then patting to soften that color up. Now then, I'm going to shift over to my scruffy brush that comes in your brush set, which is in your kit. And I'm actually going to double load that with this nice kind of ice blue color and burnt umber. Working that into my loading zone or my blending zone here. It's going to be so quick and easy. Now we're going to add this highlight to our center. All right, I'm going to come along the back side of the flower, just adding that highlight on there. Load up with a little more umber and some ice blue. Then just pick that extra little hair out of there. And then we're going to come onto the front of the flower petal and just add that on. And immediately you start to see that dimension down into our flower center. Now I'm going to let that sit for just a moment. And we're going to shift to our stem, which I have undercoated one of the stems with sap green and now I'm going to apply the shading where the stem goes under the daisy by side loading a flat brush with some water and pure black. Come to a loading zone on the palette and pat the brush up and down to distribute the color across the brush and we're just going to come in here and apply that dark shading right underneath those flower petals. And then I'm just going to walk that dark color down the stem just a little bit. Okay, then you can leave that alone while we get our liner brush out. And we're going to begin to add some of the fun pollen dots around our daisy center. And I'm going to use some medium yellow, which I need to thin to a nice flowing consistency and because my yellow is going to be somewhat transparent I'm going to add just a little bit of titanium white to the yellow and we're going to come back to our daisy center I want to blot the brush next to where the ferrule and the bristles join so that I get rid of any little water drop that could be hiding there and I'm going to start to apply some dots and let them spill out onto the daisy petals. They do not have to be perfect little circles. These will be much, much easier to paint if you have practiced using your liner brush and you know exactly how thin your paint needs to be for line work. If you don't have your paint thin, you won't be able to get the little dots to fall off the tip of your liner brush. So we're just scattering some of these on. Now we don't want to put them behind the daisy center because that center is mounded up and you really wouldn't see the pollen dots back there. So I'm going to rinse my liner brush out and I'm going to pick up some pure orange and come over to the palette. I'm going to thin that down so that it too is a nice thin flowing consistency. 
and I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of titanium white to that just to help give it a little bit more opacity. Block where my bristles and ferrule touch. And we're going to add some orange dots to the flower, the same manner. And these are big daisies, so your dots need to be appropriately sized. You don't want to put microscopic little dots around a big flower center like this. And we're going to add a few red dots around the center. And I know if you've been working along, you're feeling like you're coming into the home stretch and you should be very proud of yourself that you've worked this long on this painting because I know it's taken you some time. It hasn't been difficult, but it has not been fast. All right, so I'm going to just give myself a little clean paper towel here and I'm going to pick up some sap green on my brush and we're just going to develop a little bit of a highlight on the stem. Don't want too much paint on my brush. Begin to just brush that back over the dark shading. We'll pick up some medium yellow and add that to my sap green. Take any excess paint off on my paper towel and again just feather that highlight on. Adding more medium yellow. Taking the excess paint off on my palette knife. I'm sorry, that's not my palette knife, that's a paper towel. Just checking to see if you're paying attention. And again, just feathering that color onto the stem. You can see that we're developing a nice light area, mainly in the center of the stem, letting the edges be darker. Going to add another layer, just adding more yellow, taking the excess paint off my brush. And again, just feathering this highlight on. Don't want the stem to be too light or bright because we want our daisies to be the star of the painting. And again, a little bit lighter and just feather that highlight on. And if you're not crazy, you have crazy daisies. You all did a great job staying with me through this painting. It was a lot of repetition, but that reinforces the techniques of dry brushing to create the highlight on all of our daisy petals. And the background that we made using the decorator block was a lot of fun. I'd like to invite you to join our Facebook group, Let's Paint with Plaid. There you can join up with lots of other painters and our online community. Please visit plaidonline.com forward slash Let's Paint to find out more about the Let's Paint program. Information about studio lessons, skill builder videos, Let's Paint Live, and Folk Art One Stroke Flower of the Month with Donna Dewberry. Please join us.